Maccabeam Shani, two Maccabees, seven. It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken, and compelled by the king against the Torah to take swine's flesh, and were tormented with scourges and whips. But one of them that spoke first said thus, What would you ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the Torah of our fathers. Then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spoke first, and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan. And as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed, they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully, saying thus, Yahweh, rather, Yahuwah, Elohim, looks upon us, and in truth has comfort in us, as Moshe in his song, which witnessed to their faces, declaring, rather, declared, saying, And he shall be comforted in his servants. So when the first was dead after this number, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they had pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Will you eat before you be punished throughout every member of your body? But he answered in his own language and said no. Wherefore he also received the next torment in order, as the former did. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, You, like a fury, take us out of this present life. But the king of the world shall raise us up, who have died for his Torah unto everlasting life. After him was the third made a mocking stock, and when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully, and said courageously, These I had from heaven, and for his Torah I despise them, and from him I hope to receive them again. So much so that the king and they that were with him Marvel at the young man's courage, for that he nothing regarded the pains. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good, being put to death by men, to look for hope from Elohim, to be raised up again by him. As for you, you shall have no resurrection to life. Afterward they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, You have power over men. You are corruptible. You do what you will. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of Elohim. But abide a while and behold his great power, how he will torment you and your seed. After him also they brought the sixth, who was ready to die, said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves having sinned against our Elohim. Therefore marvelous things are done unto us. But think not that take in hand to strive against Elohim, that you shall escape unpunished. But the mother was marvelous above all, and worthy of honorable memory. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, she bore it with a good courage, because of the hope that she had in Yahuwah. Yes, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous ruachoth, and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, I cannot tell how ye came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, but doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man, and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. 
as ye now regard not your own selves for his Torah's sake. Now Antiochus, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech, while the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with oaths, rather with oaths, that he would make him both a rich and a happy man if he would turn from the Torah of his fathers, and that also he would take him for his friend, and trust him with affairs. But when the young man would in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. And when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. But she, bowing herself toward him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn, spoke in her country language on this manner, O oh, my son, have pity upon me that bore you nine months in my womb, and gave you such three years, and nourished you, and brought you up into this age, and endured the troubles of education. I beseech you, my son, look upon the heavens and the earth, and all that is therein, and consider that Elohim made them of things that were not, and so was mankind, rather mankind, rather mankind made likewise. Fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of your brethren, take your death that I may receive you again in mercy with your brethren." While she was yet speaking these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the Torah that was given unto our fathers by Moshe, and you that have been the author of all mischief against the Ivrim shall not escape the hands of Elohim. For we suffer because of our sins, and though the living Yahuwah be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. But you, O oh godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up your hand against the servants of Elohim. For you have not yet escaped the judgment of El Shaddai, who sees all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under Elohim's covenant of everlasting life. But you, through the judgment of Elohim, shall receive just punishment for your pride. But I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the Torah of our fathers, beseeching Elohim, that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that you, by torments and plagues, may confess that he alone is Elohim, and that in me and my brethren the wrath of El Shaddai, which is justly brought upon our nation, rather, which is justly brought upon our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handed him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked, So this man died undefiled and put his whole trust in Yahweh. Lest of all, after the sons, the mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures.